All right, so tonight we're going to be playing um, Pioneer and Modern. First, we're going to be playing Gruel Aggro and Pioneer. Um, this is a deck that sees a lot of popularity from time to time, and it has a lot of really good cards. The Modern Red Aggro deck is really good, and I really enjoy it, but it is more... Um, it taxes more based off of Eidolon, Cemetery, Gatekeeper, and uh, Rolling Vortex, and Rampaging Ferocidon. I really enjoy the green version because you honestly you just kind of get harder hitting creatures that have different abilities and you get a lot of ramp out of the eight mana dorks here. Um, we are trading out Den of the Bugbear for Lair of the Hydra, which I really like. I think Lair of the Hydra is a great land and is really good mana dump. You also, in this deck, you get to go a little bit bigger than the other aggro decks, so I think that gives you somewhat of an advantage. I think the four Glory Bringers are really good top end. Um, you still get probably the best removal slash creature in Bone Crusher Giant, and Gruel Spellbreaker is a great card. Questing Beast is awesome at dealing with Planeswalkers, and it's just really good at going over the top of smaller creatures. Werewolf Pack Leader can help draw you cards, and then Cloythus and Scavenging Ooze are Life Gain slash Graveyard Hate. Um, the sideboard is set up in a pretty, pretty well-rounded fashion, in my opinion. Um, you have a one-up Blazing Volley for when you're playing against like Mono White Aggro of some variety. Three Fries, really good against Spirits and maybe in certain Blue-White matchups or Blue-Black matchups. Scavenging Ooze is another piece of really good Graveyard Hate slash Burn tech. Um, Shifting Ceratops is really good in the anytime you're playing against anything with Counter Spells or really like Blue-heavy decks. Cinder Vines is good against Auras or any kind of Enchantment Space deck, and it's also really good against Is It Phoenix. Craft Digger's Cage is a really solid card against anything graveyard-based or collective company-based. And Damping Sphere is also really good against Phoenix, and it's also really good against um, the Lotus Fill combo deck. So I feel like we have a pretty well-rounded deck. 23 lands with 8 dorks seems pretty fitting for what we're trying to accomplish here, so I'm pretty excited to jump into the games. Hopefully it didn't take too long to find matches tonight. I've learned that I have an easier time finding Pioneer matches earlier in the day. I don't know if that's because people in different places of the world are more into Pioneer than they are in the U.S. So, I don't know. Hoping it doesn't take too long tonight, but we'll see what happens. I also recently set up the Stream Decker notification. Well, I guess it's not really a, a notification so much as it's a pretty neat just to have it set up. A lot of people come into the chat and just hit exclamation point deck to really see the list that I'm running. And so I feel like that is really going to like help try and solve some of that because it's been, it's been kind of awkward telling people, hey, I don't have that set up yet. So that's something I did last night so that I could have that up and running. Um, this hand feels great. We need another red source for the Chandra here, but other than that, our hand's really good. All right. Play a Lunar Elf and say go. This is the Angel Company deck. Yep. We're not going to. Hmm. So let's see if we go. I think this is the best use of our mana. Um, Give it the 1-1 one, one counter and say go. We're really hoping to hit an untapped red source here so that we can... Okay, our opponent goes to 23 and says go. Alright, not hitting a land is pretty tough. Um... I 
I think we're better off just holding up Stomp here than anything else. Not hitting a, not hitting a land there is a little awkward. Makes our draw a little uncomfortable, but it's okay. Nothing we can't try to play around here. Yep. I don't really feel like we can not do anything this turn, so we're going to go ahead and cast a stomp on their 1-1. One, one. Well, we need to get that down so that we can have access to other things, but... We're gonna leave this up just so that they don't have an opportunity to go for putting it, well, they have to respect putting it on the Muta Vault here. Uh, putting them up, if they go for putting it on the Muta Vault here, they will just win the game. And they get to gain a bunch of life. There's nothing we can do about it, unfortunately. Yep, we go to 14. Yeah, this is tough. Red source, please. Does it even matter now? Or are we just too late? Oh, Lord. Let's see. I think we might just be too little too late here. Because we can glory bring her and hit that. Yeah, they're just yeah, we're just dead here. They didn't even need the book there to kill us. All right. I don't really cast that many non-creature spells. Do I want the Cinder Vines here? Graft Digger's Cage is like, it shuts off company, but it's not really doing anything else. The Fries we definitely want here. I don't really know if there's anything else we're looking for here. Scavenging news seems like a good way to give us life here. Cloitha seems good. Questing Beast attacks pretty aggressively. Glory Ringer is good removal. Maybe Spellbreaker? Try it like this and see what happens. I don't know if this is correct or not, but. Um, we'll keep this. So I'm actually gonna play the rock fell well here on turn one because it gives us the opportunity to stomp our opponent. And if they don't play anything, then we can, all right. So now we'll just say go. Being on the play gives us the opportunity to be able to hold up our stomp here. All right. There's Battlefield. Put a one-one counter on this. Mizium Mortars. Play Elvish Mystic. Keeping their stuff off the board is probably our best line of attack here. Really wish we had another red source here to <clears throat> play. 
play our Bronchester Giant, or honestly, getting Cloythus down is probably our best bet, would probably be our best play here. Play Cloythus, say go. Okay. Probably should have hit the Lunark Veteran there. Oh, and I clicked way too... I forget that that does that during your upkeep like that. Get down the Bone Crusher Giant, say go. And then... Four, what is it, seven? Would really like to see a red source for Glorybringer here. for four we're just going to play the elvish mystic because if they go for the mutavault play here of putting the counter on it we're just going to kill the mutavault in response yep problem is, is that now we're in a spot where we can never go for that. We pretty much have to leave that up at all times. This is just such a hard matchup. Mm -hmm. Alright, attack him with the clowns here. And then we get to hold up Stomp here again. So, feels like we're not in a completely terrible spot here. Um... Yeah, that's tough. Man, that's just so much value. Back and exert on an angel. And then it feels like we're, yeah, we're just going to die on the crack back. Not that blocking was going to do anything. Yeah, I mean, we can just never use our stomp on... Yeah, we're just never in a position where we can use our stomp on anything because, like, if we do try to kill something, they're just going to animate Mutavault and put the counter on it with the deed, the Book of Exalted Deeds, and we're just going to die. Yeah, we're not, yeah, we're not winning that game. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what has to happen in a matchup like that for us to win, but uh, that, that feels like probably, like, one of the worst matchups we could have, honestly, like, especially to start the league. Mono white life gain against basically anything red is just hard.
All right. We have to try and turn it around here for match number two. And we get to be on the play, too. I like this hand. Go ahead and play this on turn one. There's no reason not to. Like, the only reason that we would play the forest is if we're trying to, like, hide a color from our opponent. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really see that being worth. Stopping around into Elvish Mystic. I mean, they could be Gruel Aggro, but my first thought is that they are all, that they're on Winota. Give it haste. We'll get to draw a card here. We might just be like dumbly dead to the Winota here because if they have any land plus the treasure allows them to play Winota and then they get three triggers. Brutal Cathar, okay. Could have been worse. They go to 13. And they're going to put the pressure on. Okay. Uh, respect, my guy. Respect. Alright. Play Layer of the Hydra. Play Land of War Elves. Say go. We can hold up our stomp here. I mean, the other play was play Forest, play Cloythus, and then during um, our upkeep, stomp the Brutal Cathar. Which kind of dictates our turn for us. Hmm. Well, they gained a bunch of life there, so that's tough. Stomp that, get our pack leader back. Well, the good news is that Cloythus basically just gives us free blocks until the end of time. I mean, the only problem we have here is that if they ever peel into a Winota, like, we're just, like, so dead. So we're not playing two spells here, so we're not flipping it back. So we can turn Lair into a 4-4. Four four. We can play this tapped and turn it into a 3-3. Three three. So we can turn layer into a three three for blocks, or we can use layer of the hot, or we can pump up um, werewolf pack leader. Yeah, because he becomes a five three. Feels like some number of ember cleave would be really good in this deck. Just something to notice off the top here. Well, that's a problem. I mean, the fact that it's a 3-3, like, it makes it a little bit better for us, I guess. 
Interesting. Would have felt like it would have been worth attacking with a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, so we get to drain him here, but we have no way to turn our Cloythus back on, which means they're just attacking for free. Yeah, I'm just going to concede here. Feels like we're just kind of like... Like, we had, like, Chandra, Glorybringer, like, Questing Beast would have been good at any point there. We had a few, we had a few outs. That's blue or white. I think Mizzy and Mortars will probably be our best card in this matchup. Cloythus is a good blocker. I mean, honestly, all of it kind of feels like good cards here. Like, the Fry is good because it deals with all, it deals with Renota. Graft Digger's Cage helps with that. There are a lot of, like, white cards in the deck that we can kind of get with Fry here. Maybe we'd rather see it like this, and then... Like, Questing Beast is good with Death Touch. Chandra deals with basically anything on the board. Bone Crusher Giant's great. I mean, maybe Spellbreaker? Yeah, I don't know. Zap is kind of weird with this deck, honestly. Um, we'll keep this. Sideboarding has been very strange with this deck to this point. We don't have any of our sideboard cards, but I do like I do like our hand. Okay, werewolf pack leader, say go. Okay. Let's attack for three. Looks like there's no way they block. We'll just kind of hold up Stomp here and see what happens. Missing a land drop there was pretty tough. Like, it kind of puts us in an awkward spot because we can't really play anything. Okay. I mean, I'm going to make our opponent get rid of their Selfless Spirit here. Or maybe they don't care. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of surprised. Figured the idea of a 2-1 being able to attack in. Um, like, probably better there, because it protects the rest of their board too. Probably take Questing Beast if I'm, if I'm my opponent here. I'm the furthest away from casting Glorybringer. And I imagine most of the removal deals with scavenging use in my opponent's deck, so... Yeah. Wow, okay. Alright, that's interesting. Let's attack, draw a card. Puts the 3-1 in front of there, goes to 11. Okay. Feels like our opponent's probably just needing to draw a red source so they can slam Winota. They just peeled it off the top right there. Alright, they have yet to play Winota, but that guy is pretty good.
four five so we're one land away gonna attack and see what they do okay I'm just going to go ahead and eat stuff here. I don't, like, see them really doing anything. Like, I don't think they bring anything back or really do anything that requires me to hold up for instant speed priority here, but... Okay, Innkeeper. They only have one card in their hand, so... Is it another six drop? All right, well, this guy draws Natty six drops more than most people I know. Most people I know can't even get to six lands in a Winota deck, so. Good for my opponent. Alright, let's play Chandra. Let's get some mana going. Run out Bone Crusher Giant and say go here. I'm curious to see if they just shove him with the clowns to get rid of Chandra here. It appears that they're going to. Yeah, I'm willing to do this and just let Chandra go to one here. And then we'll go to 21 and say go. They draw into a land, okay. Add mana... Okay. Just going to attack for four here and say go. The best thing I could think that they could draw, I mean, Tavlar would be pretty good. Winota would be insane. Um, Chariot would be decent here. I'm trying to think of what else they could really draw into that would just be like a lights out here against us. Um, I guess another six drop would be really good. How much is it to fight here? It's four? So they can fight two things if they want to. Uh, 
Um, they're sending everybody at Chandra, so I'm just kind of willing to let Chandra die here. Like, we can't save Chandra, so there's no reason to, to do anything. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. All right, let's eat something, go to twenty two. We're going to flip the knight back, but when it does nothing with Cage, uh, honestly, yeah, the game has went so long that I forgot I had Cage on the field. You are completely right about Cage um, stopping Winota. So, yeah, Winota's just the 4-4 for 4. Good call. Good call. I changed out sleeves. I have like my, I have like a few cards here that I just kind of like sit and shuffle, like just for fun. Um, and I'm gonna be honest, I like, I obviously hadn't changed the sleeves if my shuffling cards had been in a long time, because I just did, and now they're like, like they just feel so much smoother. So I'm actually going to save the Bone Crusher Giant here by stomping the, uh, what he's going to try and fight with. So that works out pretty well for us. And then I'm just going to play Land of War Elf. Um, it is a good blocker, and it doubles as... Um, it's a pretty good jump blocker, and it does double. It doubles up as adding mana for us next turn if we don't need to block. Kind of open that over enough time, Glorybringer can just like help us close the game out. Yeah, no blocks. I don't want to exert yet, but I do want to put enough pressure on to make them think about what they're trying to do here. The other line of thought was exerting on the Prosperous Innkeeper here. Yep, that's fine. We'll go to 17 here. Yep. Run out Bone Crusher Giant. And we'll say go. We're going to leave both of our activations up here just in case it's relevant. I'm going to be honest, I don't really feel like it is, but we're going to leave them up just in case it is. It's been a very long game, too. Our opponent goes to five here. And they get to attack, and they get to gain... Four life. It's pretty annoying, but there's nothing I can do about it. Just gonna take seven and go to ten here. Seven, 
See, now like, Emperor Cleave off the top here for my scavenging ears would be insane. But unfortunately, that's not an out. All right, let's see. We can make a 4-4 land here and shove in with the clowns. I think I'm going to exert this turn. I'm actually going to... Exert on one of the innkeepers here. And we're able to gain 5 life now. Um, and go back to 17. So I'm not really worried about them killing us next turn. Okay. Our opponent goes to one there. I'm a little surprised. Okay. Interesting. Gain a bunch of life with our scoos here. All right, then we're gonna six here. Oh, thought I'd already sixed. Clicked on something, that's why I can't six. Um, I feel like it's better to just hold the scavenging use back to, um, hold back the pack leader there, and I'm also going to be honest, attacking with the bone crusher giant is really bad because of the, because of the backside of Redane. Because we can deal, like, three and one, and then we only get to kill one of them, and, like, it's just really bad for us. Lord. Flip side of Redane's really good against Goblin Chain Whirler. That's something I just thought about. I also like the idea of making Pack Leader a... Uh, trampler next turn, that seems pretty good. The only thing that really scares me here is Settle the Wreckage, and I don't really know how we can play around that, if I'm being honest. We get to draw a card here, which is pretty solid, okay.
Okay. So if they block this way and they use one of their tokens to fight our Glorybringer here, then they will lose. Pack Leader gets Trample. Yeah, it feels like unless they have a removal spell in their hand, basically no matter what they do, we're just going to get there. I'm not going to do anything because if they do nothing, they die. Okay. Again, if I do nothing, they die, so... Gets trample, and we trample over for four. Nice. All right. Well, that ended up working out. It took a long time, that game. We never saw Mizium Mortars. Mizium Mortars would have been really good. Okay. Honestly, most of the stuff they put into play was green. I'm trying to think about what... Like, I know they play like a lot. Like They play Brutal Cathar. They play Winota. They play Voice of Resurgence. It kills Voice of Resurgence tokens. Like, Fry is definitely a good card to have. I think we just... Uh, I think we just need to run it back. Scavenging Goose ended up being really good that game. Maybe we want a Scavenging Goose over a pack leader. Let's try it like this. I really like this hand. Drawing a second uh, Mizium Mortars is really good. We can use one of the Mizium Mortars to help get us out of the situation. And then uh, hopefully... Okay. Now this is one of those hard situations. Because they only get one trigger. I think we're just going to play the pack leader and play the veil tapped. Um, and then hopefully we just don't get like obliteratingly punished by Winota here. It feels like we're going to. All right. Chariot is... Chariot's good for them, but honestly, doesn't really make me cry, so... Three, four, and we uh, got a ways to go to get to six here. Yep, we're going to cast this now. Okay. Try to make our pack leader a useful blocker next turn. Voice of Resurgence is really good. If Pack Leader can be a useful blocker this turn and Glory Bringer can... Well, it's not going to be a useful blocker. But if that's all they're going to attack with, I am willing to just go to 16 here. That's the red source we needed. I am actually just going to say go, because these guys block pretty well. Um, I'm going to attack and not exert here. Alright, so attacking without exerting, feel like as long as they don't hit a Winota here, we're in a pretty decent spot. Make a food token, okay. 
So next turn, we can overload Mizium Mortars, sweep up their board, and then we can use Glorybringer to pick off one of the tokens. All right, they're getting aggressive here. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I kind of like what they're up to here. Ooh, make a food token copy. Block a 2-2. Two -two. We go to 6. Overload Mizia Mortars. Man, that feels really good. Okay, I was like, oh my god, if this is like heroic intervention or something, like, get wrecked to me. All right, I'm going to attack and exert on one of the tokens here. I am going to play it safe, leave back my pack leader, because one of the ways that I feel like we lose this game is if we get too aggressive and attack too soon. Um, yeah, so like if we, if we get too aggressive and we attack for seven there, then it's very possible that we take a chance on losing the game. Um, play Cage... Give it the 1-1 one, one counter. If they're willing to trade both of these guys for this, I'm okay with that. We'll put our opponent to 10, and then we say go. Chariot number 2. They keep the first one. I assume they keep the first one so that they can actually attack with it. They're going to make a copy of this token, I assume. All right, let's see here. What are we... What are we doing here? So if we attack and... So we don't have to worry about one note off the top because of cage. If we attack and don't exert, we put our opponent to six. We then have two blockers and we can animate layer of the hydra because it's green and x which means we can turn it into a tutu trying another mizium mortars would have just been the nuts yeah so we gotta attack and i don't think we can exert We play Pack Leader, we say go. We can also just turn Pack Leader into a 5-3 if we need to. Turn one of the Pack Leaders into a 5-3 so that we can get aggressive here. I think Brutal Cathar ends the game off the top. Well, actually, it doesn't because we have Layer of the Hydra, but Brutal Cathar puts us in a pretty bad spot. It's been a pretty intense game so far. I actually really enjoyed the back and forth here. And then we take two, go to four. So 
It's not the best of trades for us, but it is okay. Okay. They're going to get a... Uh, Brutal Cathar, probably. Get rid of my Glorybringer. At least I imagine that's what they're getting. And I guess they could get, like, Tavlar and try to draw some cards or something next turn, but I don't know. I'm really, I'm really not understanding why they didn't Eldritch Evolution before combat here, if I'm being honest. I feel like if they evolution before combat and get a removal spell. Oh, Graph Digger's Cage completely shuts this off, so it doesn't matter. Our opponent's dead. Alright, wow. We ended up winning that game. I'm going to be honest, I think me... <laughs> Me and my opponent were not thinking about um, Eldritch Evolution getting shut off by Graph Digger's Cage there. So that was pretty good. That was, yeah, Graph Digger's Cage was really good in that matchup. Not that it never it never once stopped a Winota, but it was very good in that matchup. Did provide a lot of value. So that was very grindy. There was a lot of back and forth right there. Happy to come out on top of that. It always feels good to win those like grindy back and forth nights like those like those back and forth games like that All right, here we go. Match number three. Hi, and good luck, opponent. Rosansky. Okay. Well, we have no land, so we have to mulligan. Um, I like this hand. I think we keep this and put back our Glory Ringer. Based on the fact that we only have two lands in our hand. And one of them's coming in to play tap next turn. Okay. An untapped red source is probably one of our best draws here. Ask and you shall receive. That's a really good draw step because it allows us to hold up stomp and then we get to move into mul multiple opportunities here. Spellbreaker is really good. Mizium Mortar will be really good. Rockfall Veil. Run out Bone Crusher Giant, say go. Having Mizzy and Mortars is really good as not only a sweeper, but as backup here. Turn that into a 4 4 flying creature. Okay. All right, our opponent tapped out, which I enjoy. So we get to kill this, play this tapped, play a land of war elf, and then put our opponent to 12. All right. Feels pretty good so far. Ginger Brute, you gonna turn that into a 4-4? Four, four? You gonna make it a 3-3? Three, three? Okay. I assume you're going to attack for three. Yep, we go to 11. 
Next turn, you can make that 7-9, put us to 2. Well, let's see here. We're definitely going to give this haste because I want to punch in for 7. Question is, are we attacking? So let's see. If they have a land, they pay 1. They pay 1, then they pay 2 for that. And so if they, if they have a land, they can't do that anyway. So if they have land, one drop, and then that puts us to one. I guess Ghost Fireblade kills us here. Land Fireblade kills us because they equip. No, that doesn't kill us either here. All that glitters does kill us. But they can't do all of that and block. Or they can't do all of that and activate because it costs one. So they have to... All that glitters adds five, which makes it eight. So if they all that, if they have all that glitters, land, they can equip the Ghost Fire Blade, play all that glitters, and then make it unblockable. So those are our options. And then also we have Layer of the Hydra next turn for extra points. So that's pretty solid. Yeah, I'm going to go to 8. Definitely not willing to do that. Are they going to turn Portable Hole or Ghost Fire Blade into a 4-4? Four -four? Turn Portable Hole into a 4-4 four -four and then leave back Muta Vault. Okay. Didn't really think we were going to win that one, but that works. Um, Cinder Vines is really good. Graph Digger's Cage, not that great here. Damping Sphere. I mean, they do play multiple spells in a turn, but I don't see that being great on the draw. Shifty C, Scoos is good. Life Gain. Fry and Blazing Volley don't seem that great. Um... Try it like that. I don't know. I kind of like Pack Leader. Pack Leader draws us cards and has like multiple functions here as a really good blocker. Like the fact that they made a two mana three three is like what makes Pack Leader so good in my opinion. Like don't get me wrong, it has like the ability to make give it tramp give itself trample, and it it has a lot of busted functions here. But the part that that makes it awesome to me is the fact that it's a three three. The fact that it's a 3-3 instead of a 3-2 in a format where shock effects run rampant are honestly what makes it so great. Okay. Our, like, affinity-ish opponent dumps their hand. Shocking. Next turn, we have Cloythus. Um, not that I'm sure if it'll be super relevant or not. Staff of Waterdeep. Like, I know it doesn't really serve much value here, but I do like to... I, I would like to have it down, um, because next time when we play Chandra and Minus on something, it gives us better ability. It does turn it on then. Uh oh. To turn that into a six six. Now that's a scary that's a that's tough. Beating a four four we can do in multiple ways.
Uh, minus on the Smith say go. Yeah, we're kind of in dangerous territory here. We don't really have anything that flies, and Cloythus probably won't provide enough life gain. Definitely won't provide enough life gain for it to really matter here. Is this another one? That would be insane. Two, two Stone Cold Serpent's pretty good. I imagine they're putting us to two here. I, I would. We go to four. I don't know what we're looking for here, but Chief Call, that ain't it. All right, well, we just kind of get run over game two, which is to be expected somewhat. Um, I mean, sometimes stuff like that happens. Like, there's just not a lot you can do about it. So I do like Cloythus here, but I'm maybe thinking that Spellbreaker and third Spellbreaker and um, fourth Pack Leader are just better. Let's have we try it like this. keep this it's a it's a little slow considering we don't have a turn one uh a turn one play but i do like the idea of us having removal spell into very good blocker so yep So I think we have to stomp the Stone Coil Serpent here. That provides the most issues, I believe. Run out the Bone Crusher Giant and say go. All right, that's a problem. Now, fortunately for us, we're cracking back in for eight here, so. All right. Now, I mean, I guess if worse comes to worse, we can just fire up the layer of the Hydra next turn. Black Staff of Water. The Black Staff of Waterdeep is doing nothing for their Ornithopter now. Okay. They get to make this a 6-6. Six, six. Alright, that's a lot of lands. All right, attack for four. Curious to see if our opponent blocks or not. Okay, they do. Really wish we had something else to add to the board here. Like, I really don't know what we're drawing out to to win this game here. Like cinder vines. Feels like our out. Yeah, cinder vines is our out here.
And we drew another land. Hmm. Well, not much you can do about that. I mean, we drew three spells and 12 cards. Like, it's just unfortunate. I know we kept a hand with five lands, but... It was, a, it was honestly a really good hand. Like, we had removal spell into good blocker into good aggressive threat. And we just didn't see any help there. Like, Mizzy and Mortars would have been great in that spot. Like, there were a lot of there were a lot of cards there that would have really helped us out there. But, I mean, there's just nothing we can do when you draw like that. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. This hand's good. Haunted Ridge, okay. I feel like they're probably playing the mid-range deck. I feel like us being a little bit slower and having a little bit more top end benefits us in this matchup, so you like to see that. I thought sees us. I imagine they're taking Bone Crusher Giant or the pack leader here. Probably Bone Crusher Giant. Because they have Fatal Push for the Pack Leader. Yep. Math checks out. Flame Bless Bold, our guy. Uh, play Pack Leader, say go. Drawing another green source was very good there. All right. Opponents had a lot of good removal so far. But there's the adversary. I hate to slam this and need it for a Kalidus next turn, so I'm just going to actually play two of my dorks here. And I know we have a lot of answers to Kalidus and Glorybringer and three more Mizium Mortars here, but I think I'd rather just... Okay. I'd rather just play it safe. Our opponent's going to attack us to 16. We'll kill it now because I don't want them to have another K command or a go blank and us have set on a removal spell for too long. Now, unfortunately, if they play Lane Kalidus here, then that's pretty bad for us, but... Um, we're going to play Pack Leader now. Okay. Considering our opponents missed lands here, they've had a pretty solid hand. I mean, they've had five, four removal spells and a hand disruption spell. Like, let's make that five. Removal spells, like, in the dark. It's pretty solid. Now, the good news is that they probably don't have an answer for this, so... Alright. Well, I... They did have an answer for that. Our opponent in the dark here has had six removal spells. Six removal spells and a hand disruption spell and a creature. Like... It's been very good for our opponent here. Stomp our opponent to 10. Play Bone Crusher Giant, play our land, say go. I feel like they have a Kalidus here. Like, or maybe they have a Bloodthirsty Adversary. 
Okay. Boy ringer off the top. Play stomping ground, say go. Mizzy and Mortars would have been awesome right there. Glorybringer. Glorybringer was the best draw in that situation. Well, Bloodthirsty Adversary is really good. They might have had it last turn, and they're just now playing it. Banking on the fact that we don't draw into a removal spell there. I mean, they get to hit us for six here. They go back to nine, we go to ten, and then they, they have eight power on board. Mm, I take that back. They go to seven here. Well, go ahead and get rid of the zombie now. Definitely don't think our opponent meant to do that. And if they did, then good on them. Just going to say go here. Like, hopefully they don't have a third Fatal Push and, you know, 18 cards so far. Wait and see what they target, and then we'll eat it in response. Um, they do have a creature, so we're going to eat it. So let's see. We can add one, two, three, four, five. Make this a nine, nine. I mean, if they want to jam everybody in front here, like, I'm okay with that. Yep, I'm okay with that because Flame Blessed Bolt does not kill it now. I mean, we could have just eaten a bunch of stuff in response, so it's not like it was super relevant anyway, but... what they're up to for five mana here. Okay. I think our opponent, like, I, I'm going to be honest, I feel like our opponent's just kind of new to Moto at this point. Like, kind of feel like we just got away with one there, so. Um, wow, we don't have anything for this matchup. I don't think they really like Graft Digger's Cage to shut anything down. They play a lot of non-creature spells, so maybe Cinder Vines like, has some value against them in the fact that we're just pinging them for life. That feels more of like a control card than it does anything else, honestly. Um, I'm going to cut a dork because I feel like we want every top-end card we can have. Like I honestly feel like we'd rather just cut... 
a dork and a Mizium mortars and bring in a couple of shifting ceratops because I feel like ceratops is better than having any low end cards. I say that and then I have a hand with virtually nothing in it. Um, but because we have Vela the Hydra, I'm willing to try it and see what happens here. Our opponent mulligans to six also, which means they're they're on one less resource than we are, so... And if they're leading on Castle Lockthwain, they either have nothing to do on turn one or their mana is really bad. Thank you, deck. We needed another land. All right. It's Flame Blessed Bolt. Okay. Followed by Thought Seize. Okay. We're definitely going to take our Gruel Spellbreaker here. Joke's on you, opponent. Thought sees me again. Okay. Oh, please thought sees me again. Yes. Lose two life for all those lands, opponent. Let's go. I mean, I know it's not really a win because we have four lands in our hand, but... Wow, another one? Um, and There was some like thought to like firing up a uh, layer of the Hydra and getting in for two, but... That felt, I don't know, that just didn't feel good. Because I didn't want I didn't want to get Stone Rain by Flame Bless Bolt, so... Now, they could have Fatal Push here. That is an option. But I'm still going to get in for three. They do have Fatal Push here. Okay. Alright. Well, our opponent's just saying go here. So unless we draw something good, we're probably just going to make the same play of try to get in for three. Wow, that is so many lands. Yeah, make this a 3-3. Three, three. Let's get in our red zone. All right, well... If they have removal, it's Flame Blessed Bolt, but I feel like they don't have Flame Blessed Bolt here because they probably would have killed my Elvish Mystic by now. I feel like they probably have a Kalidus. All right, we're gonna try and attack for three more. Oh, and our opponent's gonna let us. All right, we're gonna play a lot of Werewolf and say go. This has been probably one of the saddest games of Gruel Aggro I've ever seen in my life. But that is why you play four layer of the Hydra. They no longer know, they don't know any of the cards in our hand now, but Bloodthirsty Adversary, okay. But there's the adversary into, I imagine, Flame Blessed Bolt on one of my guys. Or maybe they want to Thought Seize us. Please Thought Seize us. It's like, I mean, they have to assume that like we don't have anything here. Because if we did, we would be playing it. All right. Let's make a 5-5. Five five. Get in the red zone. Our 
opponent did not block. Interesting. My opponent chose to not block and not attack. It's always very peculiar to me. Like, when you're not attacking, you are actively making the decision that you're going to block. So when you don't block, I'm always like, what? All right. Glorybringer just off the top one time. I want to leave it back to double block. Questing Beast would be pretty good. Boy, this is pretty solid. Not really, there's not many ways for the, like, Rakdos Aggro deck to deal with Cloythus. Um, or Rakdos mid-range deck. I say that because there's also not many ways for Rakdos Kroxa to deal with this, with the Cloythus card. It's one of the cards that I have the hardest time beating when I'm playing um, Rakdos Power, or Rakdos Kroxa. So, that's where my thought process comes from on there. Maybe there's some card I'm unaware of that they now have to beat it, but... Most of the enchantment removal lives in um, green and white, so. Especially an indestructible enchantment, so I mean, there's that. Like Path, like Path deals with it when it becomes a creature. You can Prismatic ending it, but those are all modern answers. Like, I don't know that they're, like Declaration in Stone, once it becomes a creature in, in Pioneer is good enough. Um... Maybe there's like an exile target enchantment effect in Pioneer. I don't know. If there is, I don't know about it, so. Hey, Edoxy, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it, buddy. One second, I'm going to finish this text message and we're going to jump in this last game here, this last match. Oh, come on. Take off my glasses for this last one. Um, I feel like we can't keep this hand. Like, it's basically just seven lands. Um, <laughs> and as for many pro as many problems as the last hand could have had, I feel like this hand might have equally as many. We'll get rid of one of our red cards here. And hope they don't have like a removal spell on turn one. It's probably our best bet here. Also, just hitting an untapped red source would be a sweet here. Hollow Storm Giants. Okay. Run out Werewolf Pack Leader here and say go. Hollow Storm Giants more than likely means that they're playing Is It Phoenix? They top a card very quickly. Run out thing in the ice and say go. I'm going to attack and see what my opponent does here. I'm actually pretty... I was like, I'm pretty intrigued to see what they do. <clears throat> Scavenging Ooze, Cloythus, all cards that are really good in this matchup. And if we get them down on curve, we more than likely win this matchup here. Lightning Axe. Get rid of one of our pack leaders, which is tough. Um, man. Well, I'm going to attack again and see what they do. They probably call my bluff this time. No. All right, run out scavenging ooze and say go here. Flipping either one of their thing in the ice here is just kind of backbreaking, which is really disappointing because, I don't know, like... I feel like this is probably a pretty good matchup for us between Cloythus and Scavenging Ooze. We have Graft Digger's Cage in the sideboard. Like, I feel like, like, I guess bottoming Mizium Mortars was pretty bad here. Um, 
Yeah, definitely gonna hit the scoos here. Less cards to consider. Wow. They're gonna put us to six here. That's insane. I'm gonna take a draw step and see if it's damnation for zero mana. Nope, okay. Alright. Um it feels like a lot of our sideboard is designed for this matchup. Like I, I'm, I, I'm kind of worried that we're just over sideboarding here because all of these cards are really good. Even the can't be countered and protection from blue. Well, protection from blue is not that good. We have Mizium mortars, so I really don't think we want an answer to more answers to. Um, thing in the ice. I don't know. Maybe we do. Maybe our dorks are just really bad here. Like, maybe this is just what we're doing. Like, they, they do play a lot of, like, red base removal. Hey, what's going on, Cal? What's happening, man? Um, Cloythus and Scavenging Ooze are really good. Chandra's great. Mortars is great. Um, Pack Leader, Glory Bringer, all really good. Questing Beast. Like, all these cards are great here. No, we need to have as many aggressive two-drop options as possible. Is this what we're doing? This feels like way too much. Like, Cinder Vines is really good when you're playing against, like, Burnt. Like, when you're, like, playing Burn and you're playing against this. Would we rather have it like this? I think this is, I think that's a lot better. Yep, this hand is really good. I think that the way we have it now is better than how we had it set up. And I think that because Cinder Vines is really like I was playing Cinder Vines in Modern Burn for a while, and it w and it was when um, the Phoenix deck was really popular, and I was doing that because every time they cast a spell, it was take one, take one, take one, and it was basically like another taxing effect other than Eidolon that was really good. All right. Play Clothis, say go, and then next turn we have Chandra to deal with the thing in the ice. I'm saying go here worries me a little bit that I'm just walking this into a counter spell here, but we need to get this off the field. Like, their best counter spell here is Is It Charm, so. Because they more than likely, like, they, if they're playing Spill Pierce, I highly doubt they brought it in. Alright, they're going to kill my Chandra, which is fine. Um, Cloythus allows us to start exiling things and have a clock here. Ooh, Stern Dismissal. It's actually pretty good. Run out Cloythus number two. Um, we're going to play the Forest here so that I can hold up the Stomp effect. I'm um, from Bone Crusher Giant in case I just decide to get frisky with a with a snare thopter here. Um, again, we're just gonna say go. I continue. I held the Bone Crusher Giant last turn because we didn't have another one, so it's a. Uh, Less of an opportunity way to deal with the bird, but now we're just gonna we're gonna cast one so that we can oh hit your thing in the ice. All right, play Chandra, and if Chandra resolves without any issues, we get to plus. 
cast our Bone Crusher Giant. And now we're in a pretty commanding position. Um, the, probably the worst line of play for us here is Lightning Axe on the Bone... Send removal spell on the Bone Crusher Giant. Oh, he just paid retail for that. That's That does not happen often. Um, and now they animate the Hall of the Storm Giants and kill our Chandra. Which is what they're going to do. Or are they just going to come after us? Now they're going to kill our Chandra. Okay. So we can get in for four here and put our opponent to six. I think that's a good call because we're just we're just taking the points here where we can get them. We put our opponent to six. Cloythus puts our opponent to four, and then we have four points in our hands. So I mean, man, just getting busy. I respect it. I don't think they have an answer to either of our stomp effects here. Even if they have a spell pierce here, it doesn't matter because we have two mana to pay for it. All right, well, having Cage and Cloythus on turn one felt pretty good. We really just allowed, we really just kept them off the field there. I really like it the way that it is. We have a lot of good top end threats here. And Cage, Sphere, Ooze, Fry, Mortars really just keep all their stuff off the field. I don't think it's correct to bring in the... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm standing by the analysis that it's not correct to bring in the Cinder Vines. Because bringing it, like, again, like, they were so good as a taxing effect in Burn where you were already applying a lot of pressure to their life total. And if you were playing Gruul Burn in Pioneer and you had that card in your sideboard, I would say bring it in for sure. Um, just because it adds more, it just, it taxes them harder. Yeah, this hand's great. We'll play that tapped in Sego. Um, next turn we'll play Layer of the Hydra. We probably won't play our Scavenging Ooze. If they tap out, if they, like, I was like, if they shock in for a... Well, that was a pretty sweet draw step off the top. <laughs> or is it Phoenix opponent is probably going, what is this guy doing? Pieces of the puzzle? Yep. I'm going to guess Lightning Axe, or, yeah, Lightning Axe, Flame Bust Bolt. Dang. So he takes, so he kept Anger, Flame Bust, or Spike Field Hazard, Flame Bust Bolt. Yep. Okay. So I'm just gonna say go here and hold up the hold up the stomp from the Bone Crusher Giant in case they just wanna get uh get frisky here with a snare thopter. They do. We're gonna kill that. Play scavenging ooze, we'll eat a arc like Phoenix. And we'll go ahead and eat a pieces of the puzzle. I played the forest there um, because I don't care to shock in my glory bringer next turn if we need shock in my stomping ground for the glory bringer next turn if I need to. But if not, I would rather just make them. I would make. I'd rather make them play multiple spells to deal with my scavenging use. Right now they can't. Like they have to have like one spell to do it with here. Okay, so they play lightning axe discard. Which means they just call it Spike Field Hazard, so they have Flame Blast Bolt, three unknowns in their hand. Let's play Questing Beast here. Just 
Dern Dismissal. Okay, that's a pretty good one. Play that tapped and say go. They cast Consider. They Consider to the top. Play a land. And are they going to play Temporal Trespass or Treasure Cruise here? Or are they just going to run out Snare Thopter? Oh, they tried to run out Snare Thopter, but realized they can't. Play Questing Beast. Feels like they have some kind of answer here. Galvanic Iteration. Okay. Are you going to copy Flame Blast Bolt here? All right. That's pretty good. We'll say go here. Okay. Alright, so we're going to cast Mizium Mortars, and then we're going to play Bone Crusher Giant here. And we'll say go. Having Lair of the Hydra as backup here, along with Glorybringer, feels pretty good. They actively have no cards in hand. Which is awesome, because now we just get to attack for 8. Say go, and the next turn we have Lair of the Hydra. I guess I shouldn't yield through my turn because if they play something, if they play another thing in the ice or a. Okay. I can't fry that, sadly, but. I can Mizium Mortars that. Just straight off the top there. Make a 4-4 four, four and attack for 8. Alright, well, I'm not going to lie. That felt like a commanding round right there. Like, I felt like the first game was rough um, there. But, man, once we sideboarded in, we, like, we had, a, we had a couple, like, we had multiple really good draw steps there. But, again, that felt like a commanding game. Felt like Gruel Aggro really beats up on the Is It Phoenix deck there. So, interesting. Um, the Gruul Aggro deck was a lot of fun. I've really, I really enjoyed it. Like, I enjoy the main deck Planeswalkers and Chandra. Cloithus and Scavenging Ooze really help clear out graveyards and are really good life gain options. Um, uh, four Mizium Orders in the main is awesome. Like, that is, like, that is great. It felt like 23 was, it felt like the lands were pretty inconsistent with this deck. Like, it felt like sometimes we were drawing a lot and sometimes we weren't drawing enough. Um, I don't know. Like, the deck felt awesome. I think Fry could be turned into Rending Volleys. I think that's one thing that we that you could be on here. You could really talk me into playing uh, playing three Rending Volleys in the sideboard. Um, the third Scavenging Ooze is really solid. We didn't bring Shifting Ceratops in, but I like I know why it's there, and I completely agree. The four Cinder Vines. We also well wait what we did bring those in, and we brought them in in a matchup that we lost. Oh, the Insult deck we. We brought them in there, but we didn't really see them, so that was kind of tough. But yeah, the deck's really good. I, like, if you were going to play at a big event, I'd say this is a good deck to play, so...